Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Monday, May 27th, Memorial Day. Hope everybody's having a good, long, relaxing weekend away from the markets. Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the markets last week, and then we'll jump into my trades. Starting with volatility, VIX hit a new fresh post-COVID low of 11.52. So continuing to see volatility get compressed, low premiums, uh, which is causing some issue for us premium sellers, right? Well, I'll talk about that here in a minute, but uh, volatility continued to get crushed. Uh, stocks had a little bit of a dip. S&P hit a new all-time high before selling off on Thursday and then rebounding a little bit on Friday. Same with the NASDAQ, a little bit bigger of a rebound. Futures are actually open right now, so this last bar is actually uh, today and tomorrow's bar. Uh, Russell... Uh, a little bit of a bounce back as well. Dow hit the hardest and the least amount of uh, bounce back. Gold coming off all-time highs. Had a little bit of a sell-off this week. Uh, silver as well. Big bounce back today though, actually. Uh, notes and bonds, uh, a little bit choppy to lower. 10-year yield bouncing, closing in at uh, 4.458. Oil. Little bounce back after sell off. Natural gas uh, bouncing a little bit today after a couple of days of sell off last week. Soybeans choppy sideways. Wheat kind of grinding higher. Corn grinding higher as well. Uh, Euro sell off last week with a little bounce back late. And the British pound uh, kind of choppy sideways and bouncing now. And Bitcoin. Hovering a little over 70,000, all-time high of 74,000, so not too far away from its all-time highs. All right, so let's jump into my trades for the week. I had a little bit of a red week uh, in uh, zero DTE specifically. Wait, that's not right. Oh, this is, this is month to date. Uh, week to date. It's a little bit different story, a little bit of a drawback this week. Yeah, minus 20 on, on zero DTE. So let's go through the different zero DTE strategies, uh, starting with AM. Uh, just one of those. It was a nine, it was my 945 trade on Monday, plus a thousand on that one. On the challenge portfolio, a little bit of a drawdown. Uh, the one DTE did well, three trades, a little bit green. My one-to-one -one is what got hit the most. Yeah, minus 20 on my one-to-ones. You can see some some decent losers here. Um, not not crazy slippage, but, but I did want to talk a little bit about slippage because there's been a lot of talk about, you know, getting stopped with some major slippage and a couple things. Um, the big days were really Wednesday and then the biggest one was Friday. So I think it's it's really important to keep in mind a couple things. Number one, on a Friday before a big long weekend, volume is going to be way down. Okay, so any any kind of a move, even if it's a five, 10 point move that happens quickly, you are going to see some significant slippage. Now I I got lucky for whatever reason and, and did not incur some slippage that a that a lot of people did in our community. But it's important to keep in mind, A, that holiday weeks are going to be like that. You've got to be careful uh, from that perspective because volume just isn't what it normally is. Uh, number two, with, with volatility as low as it is and our strikes being closer together, you know, that's, you're going to see uh, some whippy action and, and that's going to cause some more slippage. Uh, and, then, and then the third point is, when it comes to using stops, it you know I think we we get lulled to sleep sometimes thinking that we are able to manage our risk just by our stops, and and that's just not the case. Stops are not guaranteed, uh, and and you know we're you know especially some some folks who are a little bit newer to this type of trading, it, it's critical to understand that the way the 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 number one way you have to manage risk is with position size. You know, the width of your strikes between your shorts and your longs, that is your ultimate risk. And while we do a lot of times manage a lot of the risk with stops, 
it's it's critical to understand and and this should be a little bit of a wake up call that stops are a little bit dangerous from a perspective of just trying to manage risk with stops and position sizing based on the risk of of what your stop is you know what we've seen here in the last week with this slippage guys it's really nothing meaning if we have an actual crazy move, an actual quote unquote black swan event, your risk is the width of your spreads. And it's it's really critical to understand that because I know a lot of folks are levering, leveraging up way too much based on using stops as your risk. And I would hate to see you guys get smoked to a point where it kind of puts you out of being able to trade. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of talk in our community of, of different strategies using tighter, tighter spreads and no stops. And I think that's a positive, uh, conversation around, you know, managing risk. So, uh, just FYI guys, I, I just want to make sure you're not putting yourself in a position that's going to take you out of the game. The whole basis of trading and using leveraged instruments like options is that yes, we can get outsized returns, but we are taking risk to do that. And you have to realize that that risk is real. And at some point when there is something crazy that happens, especially if it happens when volume is low, when volatility is low, you've got to make sure that you're going to be able to stay in the game. So anyway, I hope that I hope that helps and, and it's kind of a, I, I hope this week was a wake up call to some of you uh, so that you don't put yourself in such a position that it would take you out of the game. All right. So anyway, that is uh, my one DTE. So getting back on track here, my three twos, uh, basically a scratch, had a couple decent losers and several winners, seven total trades, uh, it's slightly red on those. On my power hour, I don't think I had any of these. Yeah, none of those this week. No Ricks in the challenge portfolio, no FOMC. Uh, my one DTE rut hedge had a few losers. This is actually done very well, uh, but not this week. Had one winner, three losers. Uh, JSPs sold some puts on a discretionary basis, plus 1300 on that. NDX, my NDX daily trade, uh, not a good week. Five trades, four of, four of which were losers. Uh, power hour outside of my challenge portfolio. Just had a couple, couple of trades. Both were losers on Friday. Yeah, these were the the vol crush losers on Friday. That got hit late with that late day move. Uh, PM trades. Just two days, uh, both those days were losers. Price action, got hit on these a little bit as well. Yeah, 13 trades, a little over 8,700 on that. Quad 40, had one big loser, and then uh, two small winners, so minus 700 on those. Quiet midday, got hit on, uh, on uh, Let's see, that was Wednesday. Yeah, for minus 8,700, some, some big slippage in there. A couple uh, small winning days, so minus seven on those. Re-entries outside of my challenge portfolio on the one-to-ones, they did well. Only one loser, uh, minus 4,300 on that. Three, two re-entries outside of my challenge portfolio. Two trades, a couple of winners, plus 2,500. I uh, had one discretionary Rick, small winner, plus 855. Uh, I've been testing this, uh, what I'm just calling a vertical with a put kicker. Uh, let it run on Thursday when we had that big downdraft. So that ended up being a nice winner, almost 11,000 on that one. I uh, did a vault crush long strangle for a plus 1,000. My O2 call calendar had two winners, plus 3,400. My one DTEs outside of my challenge portfolio, one loser, the rest winners, four, plus 3,700. Uh, so that's it for zero DTE. 
Dynamic Butterflies, just one loser, minus 3,400. Uh, dynamic Calendars, had a nice week on Calendars, only one loser, and that was a 1-2 B&B uh, for minus 675, all the rest were winners, some nice winners on a 5-7, 6-7, 3-6, 3-5, 4-5, 3-4, one three one four one three one two. So just one one uh, one loser out of eleven trades. So nice uh, eighty one hundred on calendars. On option selling, a couple wins. One on a short strangle in uh, bonds. One in a hedgehog in ES. These other ones are still open. And then portfolio margin, I don't think I had any closed trades. Pretty light on portfolio margin with this low volatility. Yeah, nothing there. So that is it, my friends. Everybody have a good, safe rest of your Memorial Day weekend, and we will catch you on Tuesday. Cheers.